So what we've developed is a, a piece that goes into where your stick steering goes, or your um, your tiller steer goes into this motor. Um, so we're just trimming it, making sure that everything fits the way it should. We've got this in the way, so we've got to adjust that. Um, and it, what it'll do is it'll come down underneath to grab the end of the cable uh, for the stick steering when it goes around. All right, so we're trimming this 3D printed part. Uh, we use 3D printing for the prototype parts because it's cheaper. Um, but we're trimming this piece out here so that it fits properly. Uh, once we get it to fit properly, then we figure out where the attachment point is going to be for the cable. We got the prototype piece to sit down in there like it's supposed to. There's a, uh, a ball on the bottom. Um, it's a quick disconnect ball joint. It's a marine quick disconnect ball joint. And here's the end that goes on it. You basically pull the collar back, put it on there, and the cable's gonna go into here. So it's easy to just pop that off, take the motor off, and put it in your vehicle for transport. Now this being a 3D printed part, it eventually, what what your kit's going to be is a Delrin or a big nylon block, right? Yep. As opposed to a 3D printed part. Right. So it'll be a lot smoother, look a lot better. Okay. But um, and we're also making some bracketry to hold the cable. It's got a nut that goes on here to secure everything to the side of the boat. That way the cable yeah. doesn't move. Clamp on the transom somehow. Yeah, on the whatever side we figure out it needs to go on. And then that way the cable doesn't move when you work the handle back and forth. Okay. So cool. get that all fixed up and then we'll move up to the front and go to the handle up there. Nice. We wanted to utilize the, the full rotation of this cable. The cable has six inches of travel, and with six inches of travel, you get almost 180 degrees of rotation out of this motor. So this thing should turn pretty much on a dime. So uh, we've got everything mocked up here in the back, uh, snugged up and ready to go up front and to set the handle and the steering mechanism for the front. When we move up here, we're going to utilize these parts which are also 3d printed uh, prototype parts this material here will be the handle we're going to cut it to length um, and then it will all get mounted down here and it will be a, a forward and backwards rotation to turn the motor which if you look back there we've got the same amount of travel we've put a little bracket on the side here attached it to the hull support because that's the strongest part of the boat right here and then uh, attached it to the top rail it gives us a flat surface to mount uh, the part of the steering bracket that will hold the whole assembly together um, this will actually get notched out for the steering cable to get put through uh, you'll have your steering handle up here um, and then it'll get the cover piece on it so you won't see any of the working mechanisms on the inside it'll keep it everything looking clean and plus We've got our Innovative Sportsman logo on the outside. So, uh, next part is drilling this to get it so it mounts on here. And then we have to clean, uh, cut this area out for the cable to be able to allow for travel of the cable and uh, get that all put together. And then, won't be too long, we'll be able to use it. So, we're just about done. So, we got the inside plate mounted really sturdy so um, actually now the the next step is actually to pull this back off um, trim this out where the cable goes in uh, do the outside piece the cover piece the exact same way and then these holes actually have to be drilled out to accept the screws that go in them um, and it'll be screwed all the way around so it's a nice secure fit and then uh, once we're ready to put it back together uh, we'll put it back together and be done I got to get uh, We'll take this off and get it painted so it matches. So I just put the holes in the shaft for the handle. Um, this end right here, I actually have to mill it down so the uh, the clevis fits around it that's on the end of the cable. 
and then it'll get a pin through it and a, a locking clip on there so it doesn't come out. Okay. So we're we're checking fitment to make sure that the, the clevis will fit once we're done milling the, the end of the rod out. Um, it takes a lot of time to do these parts. Uh, individually, we're, we're prototyping parts and getting them ready for manufacturing. Once we figure out the prototype part, we can draw it in our CAD software, and then we will outsource the, the production end of it after we get the final prototype made. That way, uh, we can get things done in a timely manner and, and more economical, because if we have to hand make every part, it just wouldn't be worth it in the end for all the time that we have involved. So um, the manufacturing process, you know, it starts out with prototyping. Once we get that done, then, then we'll move into the, the actual mass quantity manufacturing end of it with uh, outsourcing to other companies. We're together, have a little bit of trimming to do here. We got a little bit of rubbish. But other than that, we are very close to where we need to be. So I'll take this back off and then trim this piece out a little bit so it doesn't rub there. And then we'll be ready to put it back together. Um, while we have it together right now, we'll get Jeff to test it out, figure out how high we need this. Um, to where it's comfortable for him, I'm not going to knock and bump into it, or basically comfort and so it's not in the way. So once we figure that out, we can cut this, take it all back apart, hopefully trim one more time, and then we can put it all back together, and, and then uh, he's ready to go and test it out tomorrow. So pretty Just excited the way this is coming together. It's uh, it moves really smoothly, which I'm very happy with. So. 3D printed parts are what they are. That's, you know, you, you prototype with them, see that they work, but I don't know why. It was just bothering me. Everything else is gray and silver back here. And this thing was white, so I sanded it and painted it. I mean, it, it's gonna be a temporary solution for us, but, and we're really just proving concept, but I just, I don't know. I wanted it to look good. And now yeah, it looks good. We got it all set up. We're putting it back together one last final time. This will be the first time we've had it completely assembled. It should make the whole unit really solid. So normally with a travel motor, you have your tiller steer. Uh, what we've been working on with this John boat, we've, we've tried to, or we have made a prototype uh, remote steering system. It is a stick steering system. Um, so what we have is we have a cable over here to our left with the throttle mount mounted to the left, your stick steering mounted to the left. That way all your controls are over here. Um, you can actually fish while you're using your controls with your left hand. Um, you have full rotation to the back of the boat. It's got six inches of travel, which actually is almost 180 degrees of rotation in the motor in the back. So you've got it running all the way back, keeping it to the side clean so it's out of the way of anything else. And in the back, we have a stick, uh, we have the quick disconnect ball joint so that when it comes time to get off the water, we can actually very simply pull out on this collar and pull down. And then this is released, and then you take the motor off as you normally would. So it's, it's really easy, so you don't, it, it doesn't take any extra time to get the motor off. Um, very simple setup to get out on the water so you can be in the front of the boat, um, be actively fishing. You don't have to be back here with your tiller steer trying to control the boat. Hey folks, I'm at uh, one of the electric only lakes in Maryland. This one's a WSSC reservoir. And uh, it's one of the bigger ones in Maryland. It's a lot of a small to medium sized local municipality lakes, uh, but this one is actually um, WSSC, so it's, it's Washington DC's water. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch. We'll get the, uh, the new stick steer 
set up in there. We'll get that tested out and see how it runs. First time with this, uh, with the throttle here, uh, stick steer there, and uh, obviously I have my anchor wizard there, but let me give that a little bit of power. Actually, give it full power, and wow, it's sensitive for sure. Um, I gotta go easy on that. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna maybe go go at four mile an hour. It really whips around. I gotta go easy on it. <laughs> it's cool. Started to go with the jackhammer up in all this shallow flooded brush, upper end of the lake. Temperatures maybe a little bit cooler up here. Hopefully that keeps up, but gold jackhammer in the, uh, the grass kickers in Houdini. Overall, a gold, gold on gold bait fish profile. Just <laughs> had to take a minute to acknowledge the turning radius. It's uh, it's not in its own length, but it isn't a whole lot more than that. It's pretty cool. Both ways. All right, heading in for the day. Still hitting 6.3 miles per hour, even though I ran this down to 22%. It's one of the nice things about lithium is that you got your, your full power all the way until it's done. So I'll get back with, uh, with Trey give him some feedback on this, but I think it's ready to go. Stick steer is uh, operational. This prototype did really well. I'm happy. What do you think of it so far? I like it. It's very easy to maneuver it around. Cool. All right, let's check out the maneuverability. I just want you to kind of do do some ripping and running, turning, doing donuts, that kind of stuff. Okay. First impressions on the uh, maneuverability of the stick steer? Uh, very responsive. I like when you turn it completely in one direction that you basically spin on the spot. You, it, it's it's awesome. You don't uh, you don't have to worry about maneuvering a larger boat and having a, a bigger area to do it because and even in low speed you can turn it all the way one direction at a low speed and you can kind of position yourself wherever you need when you're fishing play around with reverse we don't have it reverse locked but at low speed 
you can sort of back up and kind of do a three-point turn. How'd that work? Worked excellent. Right on the dime. I came over from the jet boat world and we have a, an outboard gasoline engine on the back and a bow mounted trolling motor on the front. And when we started this build, I, I actually was joking with Jeff because I know that he would be against it, but I said there's no way I could do a John boat build without a bow mounted trolling motor. With the maneuverability that this thing has, I'm, I'm actually I'm actually eating those words right now. I could definitely do a build like this without a bow mounted trolling motor because being able to turn on the spot like that, I mean, it's it's phenomenal. I, I can't believe how well this thing handles. I mean, even at low speed, I can start the motor and I'm just sitting here spinning in one spot. No bow mounted trolling motor. All right, so noticed another little pattern here. I'm throwing a spinner bait. Uh, it was about five foot of water on wood, and uh, this guy come up and slammed it right after it bumped over the wood. Think of the rig i love it this it next year is is a lot of fun yeah it, it flips it around it handles really well um now we're ready to uh get the second prototype up and as long as everything goes well with that that'll be it we can get it into production and be good to go